I'm a lyrical, I'm, I'm lyrical in all aspects of rap, from hip hop, from just making music, writing music, producing music. When it comes to music, I'm passionate, whether it's hop, gospel, like classical, alternative, pop. I love music and I love my environment and my community. So I try to speak to my community and my environment in a language they know best, which is hip hop. And just, as I started speaking my heart and started speaking about what I was seeing and the day-to-day -day struggles in the neighborhood and my community and just wanted to make a difference, why being there, why going through it. Really, I had um, about a, a year ago, I got gunned down and shot at leaving a restaurant. My jaw was wired shut. And um, I lost my two front teeth. And I still got two wires right now. No, I got in my chest, and I got, they stumped my face in and broke my face. I, I fractured hairline in my eye and lost my two front teeth. My jaw was wired. So during that time, it made me thought about just the community that we stay in, the, the crime rate, and just the things that we go through as young black men trying to not be a statistic. And how can I relate and how can I speak to people who can understand my struggle and pain, but yet change the environment around me? And that's when my music kind of blended in. Okay. So um, if you could tell us a little bit why, what made you decide to uh, perform at the Black Hubby Hair Expo tonight? Why is it yes, with that hair bouncing, girl, I see you. <laughs> Lovely. Why, why is this evening important to you? This evening is it's a historical moment. It's the 30th anniversary of The Color Purple, in which was a movie my mother played in as Young Silly. And the opportunity to speak to such an intellectual crowd who I felt could even understand my music, even though it's hip-hop and it sounds real gutter and street, but it still has a message. And I wanted to show that my music is universal, no matter age, genre, whoever you are, you could catch the message. So. Okay, so you go by... Watts P. Prodigy, or Watts, Watts P. Prodigy. Watts P for show, you feel <laughs> me? They call me Watts Prodigy, Watts P for show, at Watts underscore P. And um, you can follow me, Instagram, Twitter. So, but wait, but how did you get into music though? Like, what was that avenue that said, you know what, I'm about to make music, I'm about to speak my mind, I was a poet. Uh -huh. I was a poet. I did open mics and I did a lot of like um, being in church. My grandma used to drag me to church. <laughs> and I said, hey, go to church. I know I shouldn't say that. If you go to church, I used to try to like fall asleep. But then my grandma was like, well, if you fall asleep again, I'm going to make you do a poem in front of the church. I fell asleep. She made me get up and do a poem in front of the church. And so me doing poetry, I learned that rap, R-A-P, in my mind, it's rhythm and poetry. What I'm doing is taking a poem and putting it to a beat. So really, it's just a poetic style, and um, it's, a, it's what I believe. And you are only limited by your heart's desire and your dreams. The only limitations you set on yourself is the ones that you believe you can't achieve. So if you feel like you're the best, because right now, honestly, I feel like I'm the best. I don't care if it was Kendrick. I don't care if it was J. Cole. I don't care if it was Jay-Z. I don't care if it was Run DMC and he bonded the battle me, I would battle him. I love him, I respect him, but I feel like lyrically there's not nobody giving the content or giving the what metaphors and the style that I speak because I only speak what I go through. I don't speak nothing else. You know, black men and police, like they just don't have the best reputation when it comes to conversation. And I don't know if you saw the piece I did on Nicholas Thomas and then you know, we have the Eric Garners and the Mike Browns, and it's really, mm -hmm. really crazy. So, how do you feel personally? How do you, as a, as a black man in LA, because you know LAPD does no. not Well, honestly, it's something my mother told me growing up cross your T's and dot your I's. If you stay on point and if you stay ready, you are never got to get ready. So, it's about, yeah, your environment can put you into situations and can put you into places, but if you're prepared for them situations and you're prepared for them places, you can't be taken as advantage of. Like, just educating myself in the laws, just knowing my rights as a black man, as a human being, has prevented me from a lot of times being caught up in situations where I could have been washed under and just, especially LAPD, like, Lord, it feels like the system is made 
to break you down because I was reading the um I was reading some an article and they were speaking on how they judge the amount of prisons they make by third grade African American test scores and by the their amount of like tr truancies. That's how they dictate from the third, from the third grade girl. Like they already prepared they're preparing because they're basically they're looking like this. If he can't read, he can't write, he's on a kindergarten level and he's in the third grade. What avenues does he really have and advantages does he have in life? Because there's people by the third grade, they're speaking double two languages. There is they're learning in Korea, they're learning English and Spanish. They're at the same time learning their language. So the advantages and the disadvantages that they put us naturally within our system, within the communities, sets us up on a spiraling downward path automatically. Now, but there's ways to not be part of that statistic by educating yourself. W.E.B. Du Bois said to hide something from a black man put it in a book. Coldest quote I ever heard. Yes. And when I heard that quote, it made me start reading. I was like, nah, I'm going to read anything I see. If that's a sign, stop. I know. Because <laughs> it's something I learned from a friend. I have a, I had a mentor who was an Omega, and he told me through manhood, uplift, and scholarship, you could achieve anything you want. And those three things have always stayed with me since. And that's just basically how I got through it. I'm here at the Kelly Brewer Show, and I'm loving it. I'm loving her here. Shout out to the sis for the hair, too. She did that thing. But my name is Watts Prodigy. Follow me at Watts underscore P. Album in stores now, Klepto. I'm, I'm a Klepto. I'm still in success. And you can't take it no more. Klepto in stores now, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon, MP3, Google Play. Anything you do your music on, you can find me.